So they had their engineers tamper with them. I mean, how? You just take them into a, a lab and you tamper with them. Lots of countries, lots of companies, lots of people touch things before you ever get them. And that all has the opportunity for this kind of, of tampering. Uh, is it hard uh, to plan and execute something like this on a pager? So it is perfectly plausible to believe that your cell phone network is compromised. And that's why you might choose this more archaic equipment, the, these pagers. So that is going to be extremely hard to, to deal with psychologically. You don't trust anything. Hello and welcome to The Interface, the Hindus podcast to make sense of the accelerating pace of change underpinned by technology. I'm your host, John Xavier. In today's episode, we will explore the resurgence of vintage tech in modern warfare with a focus on recent events in Lebanon. From walkie-talkies to pagers, these outdated devices have been repurposed to deadly effect, fueling tensions and pushing the region to the brink of a larger conflict. We'll delve into the strategic use of these technologies and what it means for future warfare. Joining me to discuss the Lebanon attacks is Bruce Schneier. He's an American cryptographer, computer security professional, and an adjunct lecturer in public policy at the Howard Kennedy School. Bruce, thank you so much for making time to share your insights on this topic. Uh, thanks for having me. Bruce, uh, could you please give us an overview uh, of the attack in Lebanon this week? So we're still learning things, so I almost don't want to say anything, but near as we can tell, uh, the Israelis were able to set up a, a front company uh, selling pagers to Hezbollah. And those pagers were created in Taiwan, and they were modified by the Israelis uh, to have explosives in them. Uh, PETN is a particular explosive, it's a plastic explosive, and they were delivered and used, and then at a certain command, they all exploded. It's kind of horrific and amazing, but that seems to be what happened. And then they did it again with, uh, with walkie-talkies. I don't think we yet know the company that made them, how they were delivered, but probably something similar that they were purchased by Hezbollah, intercepted somehow by the Israelis and modified, and then configured to accept some remote detonation command. So that's what we know. Can you give a little bit more detail on you know how these devices could be tampered with? Well, so it's what I said, that the, the devices were sold to Hezbollah by an Israeli front company, so they had their engineers tamper with them. I mean, how? You just take them into a, a lab and you tamper with them. And because they controlled the sale, they had access to the devices. Now, that's not the way, only way it could happen. It's the way it happened in this case, it seems. But you, uh, you know, we've seen the NSA tamper with devices and shipment, uh, not for destruction purposes, but for uh, eavesdropping purposes. We worry about uh, the Chinese tampering with uh, networking equipment, again, not for destructive purposes, but either to eavesdrop or to uh, degrade or or turn off their performance. But, you know, we have a very international supply chain. Lots of countries, lots of companies, lots of people touch things before you ever get them. And that all has the opportunity for this kind of, of tampering. But is this the first time uh, pages were ever used? Or it looks like pages were used for the first time uh, in such situations um, as a detonator. Uh, is it hard uh, to plan and execute something like this on a pager? You know, it's medium. And, and cell phones and pagers, they're all the same. It doesn't matter what the object is. If your blender is connected to the internet, you could do it with a blender. Uh, you know, asking how hard it is, it's... You know, it's right. It's a sophisticated attack. It, it, this is not something kids can do, like just yet, because it requires kind of some intimate knowledge of the, of the system and, and how they work. But it is not beyond the reach of lots of uh, of countries. 
It's certainly harder if you have to surreptitiously intercept the equipment and and do it quickly. But in this in this example, the Israelis had the benefit of having the front company, so they were able to uh, to 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 do the work. I would say it's medium hard. I, I don't know how to uh, how to describe it. Certainly, lots right. of countries can do this. But why would people use pages in in, in these times uh, in in terms of communication? Um, uh, is is it even relevant in today's time? Right, super hard. We don't know. So near as we can tell, that the belief among Hezbollah was that their phone systems, the cell, the normal smartphones you and I might carry, were uh, compromised. That the Israelis were in that equipment, and therefore they're untrustworthy. Whether that's true or not, we don't know. But that was the belief, and so the belief was that in order to maintain security, you you have you instead use this older technology that wasn't as vulnerable to eavesdropping. That is a perfectly plausible argument. Uh, there are companies like uh, uh, NSO Group uh, operate, operate out of Israel that uh, make a living selling equipment that intercepts and eavesdrops on cell phones. So it is perfectly plausible to believe that your cell phone network is compromised. And that's why you might choose this more archaic equipment, the, these pagers. Right, the belief is you couldn't be tracked with them, and they weren't as as vulnerable. Uh, now, now we know the Israelis preyed on that to also manipulate uh, the uh, these pagers, and they could have just eavesdropped them on them, and and maybe they did also. We don't know. I mean, we don't know if there was also surveillance equipment built into them, or if it was just this this the, these these this destructive thing. Uh, delving a little deeper into the gadget itself, do you think that uh, vintage tech matters in this case at all? I guess. I mean, the vintage tech is not relevant to this story. It happens to be vintage tech. It could have been modern tech. It, it's vintage tech because of the way the operation happened, because Hezbollah wanted this vintage tech, and uh, the Israelis set up a front company to provide it. But that's not essential to this operation. That is just the way it happened. So don't think that vintage tech matters in any interesting way here. Uh, is there any difference between the military-grade uh, encryption and civilian-grade encryption? Uh, is, is that even there, something like that? Yeah, it's the same. There's no difference between civilian and military encryption. That's very much from the 80s. We're all using the same stuff. That's interesting. So there, there isn't a big change. So it's it's very likely that the same attack could be kind of reversed on the perpetrator again. Right, again, uh, it has when... nothing to do with the encryption. I mean, it's just right. a physical object. I mean, you could imagine, I mean, I'm just going to make this up, some terrorist group intercepts home thermostats that are being shipped to whatever country, and they add explosives in it, or they eavesdrop on it. It is not has nothing to do with the kind of tech. I mean, if you're doing an assassination operation, you're going to choose something like a pager, right? Because a pager, your victims tend to keep it on their person, right? It, it, it is something that's going to be clipped to my belt. If it's a cell phone, it's, it's, it's you know, I'm having it in my pocket, but it doesn't have to be. How do you see the timing of this attack? So a couple of things. Uh, there's a story, don't know if it's true, that this operation was supposed to be saved for like the moment Hezbollah attacked Israel. And if you can imagine that, it would have been much more effective then. It would have been much more powerful and less collateral damage if it happened during an operation, during the first day of an operation. And the story is that the Hezbollah was was somehow getting wind of this and was starting to get suspicious. So Israel had to sort of use it or lose it. Now, I don't know if that's true, but if it is, that would explain why now and not at some later date where it would have been more valuable. And the other thing you asked is about how does this deal with sort of the trust of things around you? I think this is really important because if you now suddenly can't trust your infrastructure, you can't trust I mean, anything at this point. Right? If, it, if it's, it could be your, your pager and then the walkie talkie you had as your backup, it could be anything. So that is going to be extremely hard to to deal with psychologically. You don't trust anything. And and I don't know how you deal with that, but that's going to be interesting to watch. How do you think the Hezbollah 
uh, will react to this. Yeah, uh, that so, I don't know. I mean, that's sort of a political question. I'm a cybersecurity person. I can talk about the tech, but how the politics involved, wow, I have no idea. It's funny, I teach right. here at the Harvard Kennedy School, and there are people at this school who study that. It is not me. Right, right. And what about uh, from your experience on Hezbollah's warfare uh, in terms of using tech? Uh, do you think that uh, they will come up with a, the, a different form of attack from here? Don't know. Again, how this evolves, I don't know. I don't know their sophistication. But I, right. it, it is going to warrant some escalation. I mean, this is a new thing. This is, this, is a, this is a surprise. And how sort of the world responds is not obvious. It's something we're going to have to watch. Right. That's interesting. So I think that this, this could uh, uh, escalate into something else we don't know. And of course, it's, it's a totally... Uh, new paradigm that we are in. The, this has been helpful to know, at least so far, you know, how this attack, attack was planned and, and uh, why it was surprising and uh, what we could possibly expect. Uh, thank you so much for taking your time out, Bruce, to share your insights um, on the page of attacks. Uh, I really appreciate your time. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to the Interface Podcast. For more such episodes on technology and innovation, tune into the interface on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts from. Do share your comments with us at the interface at thehindu.co.in. To keep yourself updated with the latest tech, please go to thehindu.com or follow us on all social media platforms. Thank you.